So let's start by just picking up all your lovely rye knots and we'll just move that out of the way so we can see our strings. On this side, you'll remember that you've got only one string and then you've got two on the next nail. So we're gonna start by taking these ones off, take it right off at the nail. And now we're going to form a knot and tie these ones together. So just a simple knot. And because we've got the fringe to hide those knots, it's not necessary to cut those off. We can leave them just as they are and it will add to our fringe. Now you'll have the yarn going around one nail forming two strands. So we're gonna take each of those two strands and tie those in a knot. So again, you can just cut that off the nail. My basic knot is very simple. It's just a left over and through. And then I'm doing right over and through. I find the process much easier if you leave all your strands on the nails. This keeps it nice and taut. You can see exactly where you're going. It's not flipping all over the place. It's so much easier. So continue with the rest of your yarn for each set of two all the way along. If you don't have a fringe and you've just got your weaving and you need to tuck in your yarn, then you'll need to turn your frame to the back side and your pieces of wool would be cut and then you'd want to get a large eyed darning needle thread your needle and then this yarn is underneath this last piece of weaving so then I would come back in and weave my end in and pull that through. And then you would cut off your end. And you would do that with every one of these. This particular one is on top. So I would thread my needle, start underneath, just to catch that first one, and then come up and again, go through and weave in your end. And then cut that off. And that's how you would finish your edge if you do not have a fringe. I'm now on my last nail, which has got the two and the single one. So we'll cut those off and we'll tie those all together. And now the bottom of your hanging is nicely secured. This will just act as part of your fringe if you have a fringe, or you'd be sewing them in like I showed you on the back side. Now there's lots of ways to finish off your weaving for when you're ready to take it off the top here. I could have chosen to weave all the way up to the top, leaving just enough room and allowing for whatever I'm going to hang it on. For instance, if I was going to hang it on the styling. Then, after you've brought your weave right up to the top, this particular frame has got the nails alternating lower and higher. And then I would come in and just pick up the lower nails and put these like so. And then these ones, I would cut and bring them back into my weaving. Now I haven't brought my weaving right up to here. So another option is my first one and the next one. And I want to tie a knot right up close to my last line of weaving. The reason I want to do this is because this last row of weaving is not secure. 
And so by tying this down, then it's going to bring it right into my other line of weaving and keep it secure. And continue all the way along. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and find my shorter one of the two because each one has got the knot that we tied. So I'm going to find the short one. I'm going to skip one. Bring up your next two. Find your shortest. Bring that on. Skip the next one. Find your next two. Find your shortest one. And slip that on and carry along the row. Being that we have an odd number, we will have to pick up the last one. Even though we haven't skipped one, we'll pick up that last one. You could hang it from the piece of dowling just like this and then you would turn it over to the back side. You would then take all of your loose ends, thread it onto your large eyed darning needle, and you would bring it back through and tuck in all of your ends to the back side and pull that through like so. And you would do that with every one of these. So all you would see would be just the hanging pieces of yarn for the doweling. So option number two, so you would still have your piece of doweling through the loops. Bring that up as tight as you can bring it. Hold on to it. And you want your knot to be formed on the back side. So we're pulling toward the weaving, bringing up your other end and tying your basic knot. Snug that right up tight and then make your second knot to secure it. And these will be just in the back. If they're hidden from the weaving, perfect. Ones like this, you can take those and just tuck them in to the back. If it's too short, then you're gonna come in with your needle and thread your needle in first. Then thread your needle. And once it's threaded, you can now pull that through and then just pull on the end and release and now your ends are tucked in and then when you look at the other side they will be nicely butted up right against your hanger so I'm going to leave them like that this is what we're going to hang from and all the ones we haven't looped on the doweling I will thread with my darning needle and we'll tuck these in so the back of the hanging is nice and neat and tidy. And then the other thing that you'll be wanting to do is come in and trim off all your back ends. And remember how we took all our special time to make sure all of these were secured? So now we can just come in and we can just trim those off. Don't cut them really short, but just enough to make it cleaner on the back side. You don't have to cut right back down just in case it does slip through to the front. If there's anyone strand that you're not too sure about and you don't think it's secure well then just come back in so now we need to make a hanger to hang our beautiful hanging on the wall 
So I'm going to take some of my yarn of my colors that are in the wall hanging and we're just going to take it just past the size of our doweling and that's one and I'll do that once more approximation. I'll just tie a knot, basic knot in the one end. I'm just going to tape down my ends to my table and then I'm going to divide them up so I've got my white and gray together, two coordinates in the homespun and the same on this. And now it's just a matter of doing your basic braid. So I will continue on till I get to the end. Tie that in a knot. Just a loose knot because we're going to be undoing that. And so just bring that under your dowling and with the braided section tie a basic knot and then decide how much length you want for your hanger. Now I'm going to undo the knot and unbraid this section. To help hold your hanger in place, what we're going to do is come in and find some more scrap pieces. I'm going to fold that in half and then we're going to make what we call a lark's head, which is a macrame term, and we're going to put this over our dowling. The loop comes around to the back, open up the loop, pull all those strands through your loop, and then pull it tight. And that will help to keep this knot sitting where it's supposed to. And it's also going to give us some more fringe for our wall hanging. So I'm just going to use my cardboard that I had at the bottom of our weaving. I'm just going to tape that to the wall. And then remember we had, I did two layers, pull out that top layer of the Ryan knots. And now I've got the cardboard to cut against. So I'll just smooth this out. Now, we'll come in and take the cardboard out. And that completes our weaving instruction series on how to do a beautiful woven wall hanging. We started from part one, doing the tabby weave. We went through many different weaving techniques till we got to the basket weave at the top. So you've got all the information you need to know to make your own beautiful woven wall hanging. And feel free to vary the wave pattern or any pattern you want, different combinations. There's so much you can do, so many ways to create beautiful woven wall hangings. And you never know what Crafty Patty will be up to next.